Hello friends, my name is Maddie McLean. I am the creator of Canadian Eurovision and today I think it's only fair that to wash the taste of the American Song Contest off my mouth, I'm going to be putting forward my hopefuls for the Eurovision semi-final one and I wanted to invite you along on this journey with me. So I'm going to go from the very bottom, what I consider the worst song in semi-final one, go all the way to the top with hopefully my qualifiers and then we'll go from there and see what happens next. So let's begin. My bottom of the barrel, what I think is the worst song, not just in semi-final one, but in the Eurovision Song Contest this year, has to be Marius Bear with Switzerland. And it sucks, because coming off of last year, I was a huge Switzerland fan. Everyone, I feel like everyone loved John's Tears. Everyone thought it was a great song. And then they just released this drivel, and it's not good. It's probably the first song that I'm I'm actually... I, I, think it's safe to say that this song will not qualify but it's also safe to say that this could be one of the worst songs to be released in Eurovision for a while if you are a fan of this song that's great I like him I think his voice is very good but I could play this song at two speed and it would sound like it's an actual song so in terms of how happy I am that this song's in the contest it's about a zero but you know, I do respect the talent. I think that he is a great artist, and I hope that he gets some kind of success after this, because Lord knows I don't think he'll get it from this. I don't think my next choice is controversial in the least either. Bulgaria has widely been regarded as a what the heck is this song type of ordeal. Um, I love Dad Rock. I love Def Leppard. I love Guns N' Roses. Like, any of those 80s hair metal bands, I actually enjoy a great deal. But there's something very weird about this song coming into the contest in 2022 of all years. Like, this is a song that could have been there with Wigwam, and it still would have felt outdated. So, you know, I do like Bulgaria. I really liked Victoria's songs. I think that there's a lot there that's really good. And I know that a lot of these people are legacy artists, but does that automatically translate to a good song? I don't necessarily think so. So in terms of how I feel like this song will do, I do not think it will qualify, and I do not think it will be one of the ones that I am looking forward to myself. So everything from here on, I think, has a lot more value in the contest. Um, it actually kind of hurts me to see Slovenia down here so low, but I can't deny I don't think that this song will qualify. I just don't think that this band has the legs to really stand and have like a long gestation period from this point on uh this song has failed to make a big impact maybe on the night it'll be it'll be much better and if anything from here or above qualifies honestly i'm not going to be mad at it i'm actually going to be quite happy for any of the qualifiers and i i don't actually like that a lot of these songs aren't going to go to the final but obviously that's not the way the contest works but in terms of how i think this song will do I, I don't think it's going to do well. I don't think it's going to qualify. But I do think it's, it's a good song worth a few spins at the very least. Now, I don't feel like anything I say from this point on is going to be a huge shocker. Uh, Ready is good. I actually really like the song. I love the Bonnie Tyler vibes that the lead singer gives off. I like it once it picks up. But it does take a while to get going. When you only have three minutes to grab someone, and your first minute is literally... Uh, at a piano with people begging you just no get to the fast part get to the get to the part that we want to hear i think that that's very telling and i think that that's very uh it's nothing against them specifically i think that they're very good uh i don't feel like there's going to be a lot of bands in the finale the fact that four out of my three out of my four rankings so far are most of the bands in this segment if not all of them i think it might actually be all of them no they're sister okay yeah uh yeah, I don't, I don't see this qualifying. I don't think it has the ability to stand out from the pack. Uh, I'm very excited for it. I think that it's, I really want to see what they do with it live and once it gets on stage. But I really don't see this as something that's going to make a huge impact when it's there. From this point up, everything here I feel has something really unique and interesting. And it actually kind of hurts me that I have to cut more of them. But I don't see Moldova going to the final this year, even with the Legacy Artist, even with the fact that this song is so much fun. I think that there is a lot here that's worth listening to. It's a really interesting polka, folka style, and I I actually really like the song. I know it's not the most popular song out there. I know it's not the most, you know, it's not one a lot of people are gravitating towards right now, but it's so much fun. And I really think that that element of quick-spirited, 
fun hypey music is really needed especially in the final because it seems like this year is a very ballad heavy year it's no secret and man it, it really isn't great that all of most of my bottom choices here are the ones that are the bands but you know i don't know maybe we'll be surprised maybe this will go through but for what it is now i think it's fun and i'm excited to see it live now this one really hurts croatia i don't see qualifying um i like mia i really like her i'm actually going to go through and like examine more of her back catalog because i think that she's just a, such a unique and interesting artist uh very taylor swift very much that folky beauty vibes uh i really think that there's something special to her and it's just unfortunate that i do not think that this song will qualify croatia's had a hard go of it recently especially last year with albina being the first song that qualified both on the jury and on the televote came in 10th in both places and actually failed to qualify for the final because other songs just were more impactful overall so I kind of see think that's what's going to happen here. I don't see this as being a dog of anyone. I don't feel like this is going to be uh, hated by any particular person, but I do not see this song uh, making it into the finale. Unfortunately, it does suck because I do enjoy her a great deal, but it's just that's just how I think it's going to go. The last song I do not think will qualify is Monica Lou, and it's unfortunate. I really think her voice is beautiful. I think the song is very silky. It's very interesting. It's very Bond, which I obviously love because I think that there's a certain magic when Eurovision does a song that sounds like a James Bond song. But yeah, I don't think that this will be the song that gets them through. Uh, it's unfortunate, especially after how well they did last year. Uh, I'm more than happy to be proven wrong here, but... I feel like everything from this point and above holds a very special place. Um, actually, I will admit this song and my 10th qualifier could switch and I'd be very happy either way. But as it stands now, I think that this song is just that little bit weaker and the other song offers something that's so different from everything else in the contest that I think that it, I don't say it has more of a shot or if it deserves it more, but this is how I'm ranking it and this is unfortunately just not making the cut. My first qualifier in 10th place is Austria, Lumix featuring Pia Maria, if she really exists, of course. Uh, I really enjoy this song. Um, it's not my favorite, but I think that it's something so different, it's something so unique, and it's just that little pep of life that I know they're going to need in the finale, because it is not going to be an easy finale. Um, I'm really excited to see what they do with this, I'm really excited to see how this goes, and... Overall, I'm just thinking that this is going to be a lot of fun, and hopefully they can nail it. Um, if I have heard some shaky things about, you know, vocals and stuff like that, so if it doesn't make it through, I, you know, we can prepare for that. But as it stands, I think that there's something really special here. There's something really fun, and I really hope that they're there in the finale because I think that it's something that is really needed in the contest this year. Possibly my only song from a band to qualify in this segment. Oh no, there's one more. Um, I really like Iceland this year. I think that it's a beautiful, underrated song. Very unique subject matter. Um, very interesting style of song. And it is, you know, of the girls with guitars, I think that this is one of the stronger songs. And it's one that I really hope does well, because I think that they're very talented, their voices blend together beautifully. There's something about that familial relationship that when, you know, siblings or parents and, and children sing together, you really have an understanding of how everyone needs to be framed and supported, and I think that they just exemplify that to a T. So very excited, hope that they make it through to the finale, because, you know, Iceland obviously deserves to be there in my opinion. Uh, they deserve to win in 2020, and last year they did very, very well. So hopefully they make it there, and I'm excited to see what they do. No surprise here. Netherlands is my number eight choice for the qualifiers. Uh, this is probably a lot lower than a lot of other people have, but I think that the song's a little slow. It can lag a little bit, but I do think it's an excellent song. Her voice is beautiful. She performs well. She has this ethereal presence that you look at her and you're just like, there's something very unique and interesting about you and what you present and how you come across. So beautiful voice, very, very much, very much something I'm looking forward to, especially with what they do with staging, especially if it's, if they can amplify this idea in the video. 
But yeah, uh, not sure what else to say. Netherlands, excellent choice this year. Very excited to see what they do. Another choice I think is going to be controversial for how low I have this, but number seven, I have Ukraine. Uh, a grand final without Ukraine is unheard of. And especially this year, considering they're pegged as one of the favorites to win based off of sheer, um, what do you say, emotional emotional toll. But overall, I'm really excited to see them in the finale. I think that they are so cool. They have such a nice vibe. The song is something that's so different and unique, will, will really stand out in a beautiful, like, super interesting, crazy way. And what can I say? Very happy to see them, and I hope that they do very, very well. Number six is Greece. Uh, Amanda, I think, represents something very, very interesting. Love her voice. I think she's beautiful. I think that her song is very touching, even if it's a little melodramatic. I don't know if it'll be fully understood, but I honestly can't see how this song doesn't qualify. It's so good. It's extremely well put together. It's very polished. Her vocals are fantastic. And I really think that she represents something very cool and interesting and brings a different energy to this contest that I think is both needed and appreciated. So overall, very excited to see what happens next with this. Very excited to see what they do with this. And I think that there's going to be something very, very cool. If they and Cyprus are there, we both know that they're good. We all know they're going to vote for each other. So that will probably happen. I don't think it's any shock at this point, but... Overall, I think that this song deserves it. It's probably one of the best songs that Greece has sent in years, so very, very happy. Now, my number five choice, I'm pretty sure won't be everyone's number five choice, but I have to put Cities Any here. I think that this song is a super bop. It's incredibly poignant in terms of its lyrical content, done in an extremely tug-in-cheek way. But any song that advocates for recycling and uh, female satisfaction, I think that's, you know, beneficial for many parties. So overall, uh, do I think the song will get through? I, I really don't know. I really have no idea how this song will do. I have no idea how this song will be received. Um, it's all about that one specific lyric, but even if that lyric wasn't there, this song is still fun. It's still boisterous. It's still poppy and silly, and it doesn't take itself seriously. Even their video, as you can see, it's, it's sheer camp in a way that very, very few other things are this year. And I think that that energy is very needed, very necessary, and a lot of fun. So hopefully my number five Latvia makes it through to the finale. Next up, I have Armenia number four. Armenia, Rosalyn, I really feel like this song is underrated. I think that it's very, very pretty. It definitely has that early 2010s aesthetic, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that actually works to its favor here because it's different enough from a lot of the other ballads, a lot of the other girls with the guitar songs, that it's a very different flavor and it's a very different experience. So Overall, very strong song. Uh, Armenia is a country that I've learned to stand quite hard over the past few months. Uh, going through their back catalog, there's a lot of really fun songs and also Chains on You. That's also there. But they have a lot of really good stuff and they're definitely a country that gets overlooked a lot in the Eurovision dialogue. So maybe not one to sleep on this year. Hopefully it makes it through to the finale because I think that it does something very interesting, very cool, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I admit, it took me a little while to warm up to Alvania's revamp, but I'm here for it now. I really like what they've done with her. I think that she's such a presence. She's so interesting. She's a lot of fun. Definitely has like a Kaylee Kuoko vibe, which is interesting. I didn't really notice that before, but I'm watching Flight Attendant, so there it is. I think that she's super cool. She's super interesting. Albania always sends a blonde, beautiful woman who has the biggest voice, and I feel like Ranellis fits that to a T. Um, this is probably their best song that they've sent since, well, ironically, Eugen Bush Peppa came in with Mal, Mal, I don't know exactly how to say it, but yeah, I think that they always bring something super interesting, that much, that big, like, it's, the regional energy here is strong, I don't know if you'd call it Balkan, I don't know if you'd call it any, I don't know what the specific word for it is, but I love the energy here. I love her presentation. I love her performance. The music video is garbage, but we still love her because she has lots of big visions. She has lots of big plans and overall very strong, a lot of fun. And I'm very excited to see what she does on the day. My number two qualifier. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, 
but I unashamedly love this song. It is ridiculous, it is stupid, and it has no right to be as good as it is. Norway, Give the Wolf a Banana is the most bonker song. How do you explain this song to people? Because there's just something about it that you watch and you're just like, I don't know what I'm watching. And you're either here for it or you're out right away. And I don't think that that's, that's not an accident. They know exactly what they're doing. They have written an incredibly catchy, fun, hilarious song. That's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely. It, it's cuckoo bananas. That's the best way to describe it. And overall, I really think that there's something fun here. I think that they're having fun, and they bring an element that everyone else is lacking. In in the way, same way that, for instance, Latvia is bringing a high camp, this is like the highest camp. This is the queerest, strangest thing in Eurovision in years, and I love it. So for those keeping track, this is my number one choice, my top qualifier, and my favorite song from semifinals number one. Portugal is not a country that I normally go for, especially in recent years. I feel like they're they're not one that comes immediately to mind as something that I'm just like, oh yes, I need this, I love this. This song has really changed my mind. Maro is a beautiful performer. I love her voice. I love what she does with the acoustic stylings. I love how she builds upon the beats very organically and interesting. Uh, I love her outfit as well. I just want to throw that out there. But of course I do. It's very similar to my clothing style. So obviously I'm going to be a fan. I just want to say I really enjoy her. I think that she does really great work. I'm very excited to see what they do next. And overall, for me, I think that this is the strongest song in Eurovision Semifinals Qualifier 1. So there they are. Those are my top qualifiers for semifinal number one. So hopefully I'll come back and make another one of these for semifinal number two before we go live. Uh, I'm very excited to see what happens next. And overall, uh, let's see what let's see what happens. So again, my name is Maddie McLean. I'm a Canadian Eurovision. You can find my podcast on problematic streaming platform Spotify. It's under Canadian Eurovision. You can also, if you like my clothing, you can also find this and any a lot of these designs on onesheetgeek.com. And if you want to yell at me, you can find me online at Twitter and Instagram at the Big Shabam. Until next time, you folks enjoy, and hopefully, if you like what you've seen here and want to see more, you can like and subscribe because I would really like that.